struggling to move your nonprofit forward? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Nonprofit Architect, where we are giving you the actionable steps you need to launch and grow your nonprofit organization. Now, here's your host, Travis Johnson. Hey, welcome, Travis Johnson, the Nonprofit Architect, here today with Dr. Trinace Richardson. Trinace, how are you today? I'm doing well, Travis. So good to be with you and your audience. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm just glad this this works out. I mean, I know you're on the East Coast and D.C. area, and I'm surprised you guys have internet there with the whole world burning down, apparently. So <laughs> that's good news. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and we have burning sand, sun and during the day, and we have thunder and lightning at night. So if I cut out in any way, we can come back and do this later. <laughs> I've got a great team. They'll just edit that stuff out. Well, we'll so oh, good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Glad to hear. Uh, but Trinace is the founder of Real Women. Mm-hmm. And I got to ask, even though I know the answer, what the heck is Real Women? Absolutely. Well, thank you for asking for the benefit of your audience. Uh, Real Women is a membership-based community. We exist to create safe spaces for women to do personal development work on themselves. And so our goal is kind of a a, a twist between we're not quite therapy, (laughs) but we are a support group for women. We give them an opportunity to really set goals for themselves personally, and we help each other uh, work through those. We do that through virtual right now in the situation that we're in right now, virtual sister circles. Under normal circumstances, we also host physical sister circles. And we literally sit in a circle, Travis, uh, and um, just so everyone can see each other and feel that sense of community and connection. And our goal is to help women connect in a meaningful way, to help them grow their confidence in who they are and who they were created to be, and then to help them become catalyst of change, positive change in their lives and in the lives of others. And so as they're working on themselves and uh, really figuring out who they are, what they're supposed to be doing, they become better wives, better moms, better business women, uh, better nonprofit startup women. <laughs> uh, and so we're really just excited about the positive change we're making in communities by touching one woman at a time, one sister circle at a time. This is fantastic. And I know we, last time we talked, you talked that this is really a place where they can just be themselves, not worried about what handbag you carry. You're not worried about, you know, does my hair look on um, point today? You're not worried about tearing each other down, but you're actually creating an environment where they can come out and say exactly what they want to say, who they are, and really once you've identified who you are, then you can really be positive and you have that energy and momentum. Am I saying that all right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, you think about it, we are very comfortable with going to, for some of us, going to a church or some religious organization to work on ourselves in that regard spiritually. Uh, Some of us may go to a counselor as it relates to mental and emotional health. We may go to a physical um, trainer to to work on our our physical health and to get uh, in shape and those types of things. We go to a doctor medically to feel better. And so when it comes down to who we are as women and what we're striving for personally, just personal development, I want to do better in my finances. I want to do better um, as it relates to the kind of wife I am, the kind of mother I am, the kind of woman I am. There are things that have happened in my life that um, I haven't been able to process and sort through. And because a woman across the circle from me has dealt with the same thing, we get to process together. And we, we create, our core values are really centered around authenticity and transparency. So to your point, it really doesn't matter what title you come in with. Uh, we really don't care. <laughs> we don't use any of those. You know, I, I have a ton behind my name, but when I'm there, um, I'm just me. And as it relates to, you know, um, what we share and how we share, everything is confidential. Uh, we, we have that as a core value. And 
folks commit to that when they come through the door. And so it's a safe place for women to just be and, and share no matter what they're dealing with. So we have w- women who are business owners, who are heads of, of large nonprofit organizations. And we have women who are, you know, regular working women who just want to connect. And so we're, we're crossing all types of boundaries, uh, racial, socioeconomic boundaries, so that we can all sit and talk about things that we have in common as women. See, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I know I've talked to a bunch of veterans groups that try to do the same things for veterans. There's just something about being a veteran. You have the, the certain vernacular, you have the same type of experiences, and you need to be around other veterans to really kind of unwind and get to your quote unquote safe space to where you can have those conversations. And it's, this sounds like this is the same thing you're doing with the ladies. And I think that's wonderful, but you do it a little bit differently. You guys actually have a membership, a paid membership to your organization. And I don't know if we've had someone on the show. I'm pretty sure we haven't yet that talks about an actual paid membership. What does that look like? And why, why is that your model? Well, I'm excited to be your first on here uh, as it relates to uh, a paid membership. And I'll I'll be honest with you, we didn't start off that way. Um, I'm aware your audience is uh, nonprofit startups. And so, um, I'm you know, my startup story literally is uh, we would meet at a library. No, we first met at my home. Let me start where we really first met at my home. And then we transitioned to a library and I would literally sit a glass bowl at the door and just ask people to give a dollar or two on the way out because I was renting the library space and just hoping that someone would give. And um, there could be 25 women in the room and I might have a $20 bill by the time they were done. And we might have gotten and so engrossed in conversation that I didn't reiterate it and there was nothing or maybe a dollar by the time we were done. And so that got old really fast, especially to my husband. Um, <laughs> making sure that it was a comfortable and professional environment for us to really chat. So what we did was we really strategized and sat down and thought about all of the different ways that we could possibly work this. Um, At the time, we had not gone through the 501c3 process. We were really just hosting these in the hopes that they would be of help to women. But as we started thinking about formalizing ourselves, we wanted to make sure that we had a a revenue engine. And it just made sense to to transition into membership because what would happen is a woman would come and experience us. And I'm sure many of you have experienced, uh, many folks in your audience have experienced something similar where someone experiences your services and they love them and they pass the word on to someone else. And that's what would happen with us. People loved us. And so by word of mouth, we would have women come and be a part of the circle. The what next is so important. (laughs) So you, you have to have a what next for the folks who are enjoying your services and taking part in whatever you are offering. And so our what next, we would always invite the women to come their, their first time is as a guest. And then as we moved on, we would, by the end of the session, we start off by mentioning it, but by the end of it, we would say, we know, you know, from, from what we heard from you, you had a wonderful time here. We would love to tell you more. If you just stick around for five more minutes, we'll tell you about our membership group. And so from there, the, the percentage of women, I think, you know, at every meeting of an average, about 20, 25 women, there were always three or four women that hung back who were not recurring members already, uh, who would hang back and hear more about us. And then out of that, half of them, one or two of them would sign up. And that's how we've grown. And we literally have had the membership community. uh, Like I said, we started in 2013. And it wasn't until 2016 that we filed the the paperwork. But it took me a year to figure the whole thing out. Um, So that's why you need someone like the nonprofit architect. (laughs) That started the process. So we formally opened up our membership at the end of 2018. So uh, with this, you know, we've grown over two years. Um, We have a couple thousand women on our member uh, on our email list, but out of that, we have about 160 women that are members, and that means that they're they're paying monthly or annually to us. Does that help at all? 
That is that is perfect. And there's there's a few things you said in there that I really want to point out. First off, thanks for plugging my services without me asking. That's how, <laughs> always better when someone else can say how wonderful you are. Um, yeah. Uh, the second thing is, if you know you're listening to this, just how long the process was from idea to 501c3 to monetization. So many people that I talk to that have the idea for, they're looking for this, they go into this without a plan for monetization. Or they call me, they have their 501c3, they don't really have a board, nor do they have a program or money coming in and they want me to fix everything, which is fine and I'm happy to, but it doesn't have to happen overnight. And in most cases, it does not happen overnight. It's very rare that you jump into this thing and you're up and running and fully fully loaded and ready to go. It just, it it doesn't happen. And when I say that, there's always these onesie twosies out here that just had a huge following with something in a a business. They know exactly how they're going to monetize this thing. They roll it out and they already have a a ton of people on board. So I'm not talking to, to, you know, those few people, but for the vast majority, you want to do something and provide a service and really help a certain community in our case today, you want to help out uh, women, right? So Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do, but it's going to take time Mm -hmm. and it's going to take perseverance. I love that little, little jab. And you're like, your husband was, was very excited when you started monetizing. (laughs) Uh, And so many people out there with these, these hopes and dreams and these visions, you eventually would love to transition from a full-time job to doing your passion full-time. And that just takes time. Perseverance can, I, can I say something about that, Travis? Because so much of what you said is so important. Um, I think about it doesn't just take time. You mentioned time. It takes money. You mentioned my husband and um, even filing costs money. Right. And there some some folks like me uh, were are probably or f- might find themselves ready to to formalize the work that they do. But not only do they have to get informed about the process, but then when they find out the costs that are involved, um, they really have to plan for that because dollars are assigned already <laughs> to different places. And like you said, it takes a whole lot of time to to get to the place where you can do what you want to do um, to help others and develop that nonprofit without having um, some supplement uh, of, a, of an income, whatever that looks like. And so for me, my goal, honestly, was first of all to raise the money to do what needed to be done with the process. But then because of my lack of knowledge, I wish I'd known you and and discovered you back then. I don't know if you were doing what you do now back then, but but at the time I did find, um, once I finally set myself up and said, okay, I'm ready to invest some money in this. I can afford to to set aside some dollars. I found a wonderful young woman who, uh, who walked me through the process process and was very, um, she was an educator, not just a consultant, but she really educated me on the process. And so she walked me through that process and and I was able to get the 501c3. But here was the thing. I wanted to get to the point, and this was my first step, I wanted to get to the point where the organization paid for itself. Because like I said, my husband and I had been footing the bill for any and all expenses. Website, you know, you you think about, I'm not just hosting an in-person event. At the time, it was just one sister circle. We've grown to several sister circles. And now as it relates to um, to Corona and all that we're dealing with at the time of this taping, um, we now have only virtual sister circles. So we brought them all together and we have people meeting with us from all over the world. OK, so we need we need a Zoom account. We need you know, all those things are really important to have in place. And if you don't have the extra income or if the organization is not set up to pay for itself um, or it doesn't grow to that point, it's really hard to continue to manage. So all of those things have to be thought about. And I'm sure um, someone like yourself is able to help someone think about that in advance. It took me a while to get there, but I'm so happy to say that with the membership model, I have been able to sustain income and recur income in such a way that none of my personal income goes toward any of the bills related to real women. Even in these uh, traumatic times that we're having right now, there's so many opportunities out here 
as I'm sure you, you know, you're making your clients aware, we were able to get grants and loans that would supplement what we would normally be fundraising and earning with our, with our events. And so we're well taken care of and I, nothing has to come out of my personal account. And in fact, you know, our membership has sustained. Uh, we even have, you know, we, when we do have someone who says I have a hardship, um, you know, what, what can you do for me? Cause I'm going to have to fall out. If not, we're able to, to talk with and, and talk through some of those things on an individual basis because we're not hurting at this point after, after learning some hard lessons along the way. No, absolutely. And it's, it's great that you can have that, that flexibility. One of the other benefits of having a membership site, and, and for those of you that aren't, that aren't really understanding exactly what we're talking about, a little side example here for you. I know there's a group here in South Oklahoma City called Women of the South, and they provide primary uh, scholarships to uh, female head of households and then to female students going to Oklahoma City Community College. If they're running a, a foundation, right? In order to, to fund a foundation, it takes cash. Well, yeah. if you do the membership model, if you have 100 ladies paying you $85 a month, that's $102,000 a year. So you could give out, in theory, $100,000 worth of scholarships or grants and still have $2,000 of operating funds or something like that. Or it would take 200 people at you know, 4350 or 4225 to get the same hundred thousand dollars a year. So, I mean, this adds up pretty quickly. And even if you were at something like say $25 a month with 160 ladies, you would have four grand a month coming in. Um, yeah. And can I, can I give you our numbers? I'm, I, I'm sure it'll help somebody. <laughs> I, don't, absolutely. I don't mind at all. Um, and so for, for our membership, and we have honestly, we started lower than this and we could go higher. I've been a part of some mastermind groups and, you know, learning, taking some classes here and there uh, that focus on membership communities so that I could learn more about what others are doing. And it has just worked for the community of women that I serve to stay right around $25 a month. Um, and if they, if they choose to do annual then they get to save a little bit because that's about $300 a year versus um, if they do it annually, it's $250 a year. So they get a, a small savings if they go ahead and give the annual and it's, and it's all recurring. So they agree at the beginning that it, it's automatically taken out on a monthly basis. And for that, they get not only the monthly sister circles that everyone else is accustomed to, because after you come as a first time guest, you have to pay to come after that. We haven't been doing that with the uh, with this season that we're in with the virus. We've just been allowing people to come online for the summer. But typically after your first time attending, you would pay to come. And so a member would never have to pay to come because they're already paying the monthly fee. So they would literally be able to come in and sign their name off and just initial and I'm here and they have the T-shirts and, you know, all those things. They have these wonderful things that say, I'm a part of this organization as a member. And then we connect with them offline. The most popular way has been Facebook, but we also reach out to them via newsletter, just the members, send out special announcements. Um, we stay connected to them. We know their birthdays and wish them happy birthday. Uh, they, they're, they're telling us what, you know, wonderful things are happening and what traumatic things are happening in their lives. We host a private uh, sister circle just for them so that, they, you know, they feel extra special about the fact that they're just meeting with members only, if you will. And uh, they get to keep up with each other, their growth process. And they know what happened with Betty, you know, three months ago. So they get to check up with Betty in these closed sister circles. Um, and then small benefits, like we have um, membership benefits connected to other businesses. We've had businesses tell us, for your members, they get a, a half price discount or a 25 percent off discount. And if they tell us that they're real women. And so those types of things are really important. And then the last thing that we've begun building, which we're really excited about, we call our Personal Development Institute. And so we house a lot of recorded online webinars and workshops for them and we house them. We currently use Teachable, um, but there are tons of different 
course uh, management systems out here. Um, and so we host, uh, we house in there several webinars and workshops and they, their own members only get access to them and they get to, uh, to go in there whenever they want and get real women on demand. So those are some of the benefits of being a member. And we list those on our website so that you can see the difference between just being on our email list and getting a newsletter once a month and letting you know when our open um, when our open sister circles are and then the depth of what it means to be a member. See, that's just fantastic. I love that. I love that you're hosting it on Teachable. Is that is that a membership site, a membership software? So course management software is um, more what I call it because someone could just post a course and people could just purchase from there. As it relates to our membership site where we host our members and keep track of who they are, we use Member Planet. Um, and Member Planet is the most affordable that I found. If anyone, this is a community, right? So if anyone in your audience, Travis, knows anything <laughs> less expensive than what I'm about to share, let me know. Um, but for, for what we get, it's really awesome because um, we get something for our members. So we get a members only, we get to set up different audiences, right? So we have our large membership list that has thousands on it, but we get to share, uh, to set up these small subgroups and so our members are a part of that and then we we get to send out newsletters through member planet um, we get to, to host events or or the, the the part of the registration for the events we get to do all of that through member planet we don't have to use eventbrite or something else we can utilize the the, the package inside of, of our membership site and anyone can can join our events. Uh, we can give a discount for our members right there in the site. And it's $300 a year. I don't know if it gets any better than that. And there, there, you can pay for more to get more services from them. But um, that $300 a year has really been amazing for us. Um, I think you can you know, pay a little bit more like $30 a month uh, if you wanted to do it monthly instead of annually. So our membership is housed our our members information and and all those those things it's housed in member planet and the course offerings we access through teachable and i don't believe that member planet allows the course management software piece of it but we've married those two together so you've been successful having your your members go into two different places it sounds like you've got membership planet teachable and facebook so yeah, this is this is really good for your audience to know. Um, people do not like going a lot of places. They don't <laughs> like it. Um, <laughs> they just won't do it. And so we typically bring something to them. So uh, one of our members' experiences uh, would look like this. They would sign up as a member through Member Planet, and they really don't have to go anywhere. They're on our website, which is realwomenrock.org, if you want to check out how we have it set up. Um, um, but realwomenrock.org, they go to the work with us, and there are a lot of different ways they could work with us, but one of them is to become an all-access member. And when they click on that, they fill out a form that is connected to Member Planet. Once they filled out that form, they now have access to Member Planet. Member Planet has an app and all those things, but typically they don't have, they don't ever have to go back into Member Planet because we send out our newsletters through Member Planet. We do the background work, and so because they're a member there, they if we send out an evite uh, an event registration uh, form, then they would fill it out. Um, they would sit, we would send it through their email, and they would fill it out there. So there's really no reason for them to go back into Member Planet unless they were going to update some information. Um, so the so that leaves uh, Facebook, which a lot you know ninety percent of our members love that connection. But of course, there's that ten percent who's either trying to stray away from social media or is just anti Facebook for philosophical reasons, and I totally get it. Um, and so we, we try to identify who those folks are who have never signed into our closed. Uh, group so that we can stay connected to them by email and let them know that, you know, there's some things we'll send you by email since you're not connected by Facebook. And then for Teachable, for the coursework, we send them the link through Facebook and by email. So they really only have to either check their emails after they become a member or stay active in the Facebook group, if that makes sense. Okay. So 
just to recap, make sure I understand. And if I'm asking mm -hmm. questions, I think my listeners might have questions. Absolutely. You go to your website and sign up and that takes you to the member planet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yep. you are meeting in a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, and you will also send updates via email. Did I get it? Yes, absolutely. That's it. How is it on your end to manage all of those things? Yeah. So we, we've learned a whole lot of lessons. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of lessons. First of all, I have an assistant. <laughs> And I have an amazing team. I have to tell you, our team has always been volunteer. You know, we've, we've tried our best to, to shower love on them in as many ways as we can. We sponsor retreats for them. Um, you know, they don't have to pay for our events, of course, because they're volunteering. And so we give gifts and say thank you in a lot of different ways. And so um, our board is very helpful um, in promoting what we do and, and even helping. But we've always got um, myself or, or our assistant or um, someone on the team who is designated to be a community builder inside of Facebook. Um, so they're, we're always responding and reacting. And you want to make sure that you are encouraging interaction among the members so that no one is dependent upon you as the founder or your team to interact. They should be talking to each other on the regular. Your members should want to post ideas themselves because they believe in, in what you're doing. Um, you may even want to, instead of just designating someone that you pay, reach out to some of your members to, to ask them. Many people just love to be ask to do something special and different. So you poke them and say, you've been really active in our Facebook group. Would you mind being our community manager? Would you mind making sure that people get responded to? You know, that's really good stuff, right? Uh, and folks love that. Um, the folks who are the most active love uh, being made feel, uh, to feel special in that way. Um, and so that takes some of the weight off of me. I really only have to respond honestly in Facebook the way other people do. <laughs> and then and I, you know, I may send out announcements and those types of things um, as I feel led to, but there's someone on our team who does birthday announcements. My, our, our virtual assistant posts, posts all of the events that happen. And then we have people in the community, in the group that, as a member that keeps things active in the discussion going. Um, so that's Facebook. Member Planet, I've done most of the, the work there. For example, when a new member comes on, I have to make sure they're onboard it properly. So I've created an email template uh, and that email template sort of welcomes them. It has a, a, a video embedded within it that I created through YouTube and I welcome them. Um, I let them know what resources are available to them and I let them know next steps that we do want you to connect with Facebook. It's not a mandatory thing, but we'd like for you to do so. We'd like for you to, to read our emails, make sure we're not on your spam list, all those things. And then we look forward to seeing you on a monthly basis in our sister circles. And so we send that out. But in order to make sure that happens, I need to have my eyes on that. I feel like um, we're still... You know, we, we've grown a lot, but I feel like we're still small enough where I can look at those things personally and make sure they're happening um, in the right way. Um, because when they weren't, we weren't always doing that. Um, there were folks who kind of felt like, okay, so now what? And so you've got to give folks a now what and a next step. Big lessons learned there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like if you listen to the show and you're like, this is great information and all, but you get to the end and I don't tell you what. I would like you to do. How are you supposed to know what you should do? A uh, couple of questions for you. I'm assuming, I know you've got like 160 or so um, uh, members. You don't, I'm assuming you don't have one circle that's 160. So two questions. How, how big is your kind of ideal circle? Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you don't lead all these circles. So how do you designate leaders to lead these other circles? I'm so excited about these questions. Okay, um, <laughs> so um, so you, first you got to think about the kind of work that we do, right? I know folks in your audience may be doing different types of work, but if you are convening people um, and you are encouraging and looking for seeking some meaningful dialogue among them, you you really the the larger the group, the more difficult that is. <laughs> so let's just 
just put that out there, right? You have to manage more. Um, you have to time limit um, how long people talk and all those things um, to make sure that people don't feel left out. And we, we are cultivating a safe space. So it really means a lot to make sure that we do that right. We started from 2013 till around 2017 or so. We were just one circle and uh, that circle would fluctuate depending upon, oh, Travis, the weather, the topic, <laughs> the, you know, whether, whether I honestly had the money that month to have it at the library and had to change the location to my house. You know, all of those things made a difference in what the number looked like. But on average, there were about 20 to 25 women that showed up. And that's probably the best manageable number for us in a sister circle. So as we started growing, what we, what we did was we just decided to split the circles up. And we tested out what growth looked like for us for in-person circles in the D.C. Maryland area. Um, if you're familiar with the D.C. Maryland area, it's a huge area, right? It encompasses uh, a lot of Maryland, Northern Virginia, and then the District of Columbia. And so it's vast. <laughs> and so um, so we have uh, we had established a Charles, this is before COVID, we established a Charles County, Maryland, that's Southern Maryland, uh, Sister Circle a Northern Virginia circle. Uh, we had established a Baltimore, Maryland circle for kind of upper Maryland in that area. We'd established a Prince George's County, Maryland circle. Um, and, and then we had a young adult real women for ages 18 to 30 something. And so we had about five or six circles that were going and they would each meet monthly on different Saturdays. So our, our boast was that every Saturday, if you were a member and you lived near us, you could possibly go to a sister circle every Saturday if you wanted to somewhere in the area, if you were willing to travel just a, a little bit. Um, but our ultimate ultimate goal is across the country, across the globe, that every woman would have access to a circle of sisters and a safe space. And so we, we figured out we couldn't grow like that with me either traveling to all of these every Saturday <laughs> or, or me asking, you know, me telling, okay, so this is how you do it. Can you go and do that one? And I'll go do this one. So I literally had to sit down and this is so important for your listeners because oftentimes we as founders or startups, we want to just do the work. We just want to do the work. We don't, we don't want to plan. We don't want to budget. We don't want to talk to an accountant. We don't want to talk to an attorney. We don't want to do any of that behind the scenes operation stuff. We really just want to do our work. And honestly, I just wanted to do sister circles, but I realized I was going to drive myself and my family crazy just doing sister circles if I didn't replicate myself. And so we began a, a, a train the trainers and we we call them facilitators. Um, and so we began to help equip facilitators by, I, I sat down and developed an entire curriculum for them. And we started off doing it three months long and we decided for the initial training to do it over the span of three weeks and they would meet every weekend for three weeks. And it just shortened things a bit so that the information became more compact and digestible for them. So for three weeks, um, every weekend, we'd meet for three or four hours just in one setting, one day on that weekend, either a Sunday evening or a Saturday morning. And, um, and we would, and it's in small group sessions where I would instill in them the culture of our group, what we did, and then how we did what we did. What made our circles different than just a presentation or just, you know, a, a conference workshop? What makes that circle different? And then they would be paired with someone who was more experienced than them to get more training and to be slowly um, involved in either an in-person or a virtual sister circle. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, I got all of that. Yeah. Listeners, if you didn't give that, if you didn't understand that, leave a comment and say, hey, Trinace, what the heck are you talking about? Please. Or go to facebook.com slash groups slash nonprofit architect and ask our community, be like, did y'all catch that sweet episode with Trinace? Yeah, what the heck was she talking about about expanding sister circles? Anyone catch that? Oh yeah, I caught that. And then we answer the question. Uh, I would love to, yeah. But you're, you're really looking to have 
different affinity groups. You want to have a teacher group, a military spouse group, a CEO's group, a pastor's wife group, a pastor's group, a military yeah. group, a cop's wives, a, you know, fire wives. You want to have, and I think it's very important that you get in, there's, there's multidisciplinary circles for people of all different uh, jobs or whatever have you, whatever station. Yeah. But yeah. it's important to get in that group like veterans do uh, very well of getting in the group where they can speak the same language and get into, you know, I think I call it techno babble, where you get the you're behind the scenes, no one else outside of the industry knows what the heck you're talking about, but you're able to talk about it and you have someone that's able to listen at the level that you're at and show the care that you need. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. So as a startup, you know, you get really excited about the idea that you have and the framework or, you know, the process that you've begun. And then you find at some point, you know, there's a now what? There's a, you know, how are we going to expand and grow? What's new, especially for a membership-based group? Because every year, you know, when, when it's time for them to renew, <laughs> they're wondering what's new, what's different about this organization that would cause me to stay here, um, that would cause me to continue. How can I continue to grow here? And so one of the ideas that we have is less, because there's so much to be learned from a, a group of women uh, and we cross all gen, uh, we cross all age groups, we cross all racial groups, we ca- cross all socioeconomic groups. We get to learn so much from each other, right? One of our first conferences, uh, we call them intensives because they are really intense. Um, <laughs> but uh, we 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 focused on decades where we we heard from twenty year olds and then thirty year olds and forty year olds and fifty year olds and had them talk about their experiences within their decade, and then folks in the audience got to respond either from the younger decades they're saying wow i learned a lot from the older decades like wait till you get here (laughs) and so (laughs) and then at the very end we culminated literally with a video we tried to have her there physically um, but uh her health and mobility wouldn't allow so we videotaped just in case and it worked out a 93 year old woman just giving us wisdom from her age group and so there's so much wisdom that can be gained from a you know across sex sectors. But what we've learned is, as you just said, with your with the military wives and veterans, there's a language, there's an experience that if you're in that same community that you have that no one else understands. Let me tell you, I, I my first vocation and my first love is being an educator. I taught high school and um, and I still am in the world of higher education. And as a result, I know what teachers are thinking right now related to everything that's happening in the world. And so what they need to process is very different than what a, a woman who is who is a mother or, ju- or a wife who is not an educator needs to process about this time. So educators need their time to talk to each other. Um, military folks need their time to talk to each other. And I think we could think about that with so many subgroups. And I think that's a way that as a nonprofit startup, we can begin to see what does long-term growth look like for me? How can I diversify the services that I provide? Um, and one of those ways we've done that is to really think about the very specific groups. We've, we've done things specifically for church groups, and that's very different than the way we would do it because we are very respectful of folks' uh, beliefs, no matter what they, you know, what part of, of, of their belief system or creed they're, they're into. And so we host it very differently outside of church than we do uh, inside of church. And so we're willing to tweak things based on what audience we're, we're going to. I think that's fantastic. What would you give, what advice would you give a startup nonprofit who's looking to do either the membership kind of format or the group discussion format, what advice would you have for them? Yeah. Um, and, and can I add to that too, Travis, the whole train the facilitators type of thing too? Can it's your I show. Add- you whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's your show. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so as it relates to a membership, I really, I'd say, 
get clear about what your offerings are, because if you're going, there's a difference between having a course and um, I'll give one more tidbit. I, I, Took the, the one that was the most useful to me was an organization called Tribe. And some of you may or may not be familiar with it. But if you look up Tribe, uh, Stu uh, is, is the guy's name. I'm sure you would find it. Um, but I learned a lot from there about the distinction of membership communities. And I think it's really important to clarify and make clear for yourself what your offering is. Are you offering one course that you're just going to stretch out over the course of six months or 12 months and you're going to break it up into pieces so that folks get a piece of it every single month? Um, that's, a, that's a possible membership community. They get your course, but they get it over time. Or are you going to offer services and you have them listed and that's what you want to offer and you're going to offer it every single month with maybe some new and exciting things happening here and there periodically. Get clear on what that is so that you can answer the question of the potential member, what do I get for my money? Um, and what does it look like for you want to get clear on what it looks like for you um, after the, the six month mark and they've paid for six months or that now they've paid annually once and they're looking at their year two with you, how do things look different? You just wanna think through that because you don't ever want people to perceive, we know our hearts when we're starting out, we really wanna offer something that is uh, meaningful and we know how, how much quality it is embedded within it. But the, folk, the person that's coming on has a lot of questions and rightfully so. So they're investing in the work that we're providing, the services we provide. So we want to be able to anticipate some of those questions. I would say it would be really wise of you um, because even though, um, you know, I'm here, um, I know in my past conversation with Travis that, you know, that there's a whole lot that you can learn from a nonprofit consultant to really walk you through those steps that you would get those questions answered so you can think through what your, what your plan looks like, what your model looks like, and all those things. You can do a lot of that ahead of time before you put your offer out there. I also would um, say it's, this is what one way I started. I have, I, I actually have two membership groups. The second one um, is really small. I just started it this past year and it's called Leading with Soul where I um, train and mentor women leaders. Um, and the way that I started this one is my second tip. I would also just put out there, let folks know, this is what I'm endeavoring to do. If any of you would like to come on um, as a trial run with me to walk through this with me, I will give you the best rate you've ever gotten. And then you would be able to enjoy these services when everybody else is coming on after we've tweaked it together. You're going to, you're going to be a lifetime member because you've <laughs> helped me work through all of the tweaks. And so I had women spend about three months with me and I showed them what I was offering and they were literally my focus group. So it, you might have a community of folks already, just maybe five to 10 women or five to 10 folks who are interested in the services that you have to provide. And then you can work it out with them. Those are two ways that I would suggest that you think about starting something that that's focused on groups or teams. Um, and then the other thing I would say is take the time out to build and plan a curriculum if you are going to train other trainers to do what you do. And the best way to do that is to just slow down enough and think about the work that I do. Let me just take it step by step. What do I do? Okay, this is the first thing that I do. I typically email a lot of people. And then I, after I email them, I create a lesson that I want to present or a presentation. And, you know, just step by step, what do you do? You map it all out and then you can train someone else to do the same thing. That is fantastic. And it segues perfectly into what the nonprofit architect is launching. Ah. In weeks because we are launching a membership based mastermind where you can come in together with other nonprofit leaders in a mastermind group but we're also going to add the next extra layer of group coaching and what that really is going to look like it's two meetings a month the first meeting of the month we're going to bring in an expert like one of my guests Preston Cohen and we're going to talk about the Google ad grant and how to get it and how to maximize and make sure you're getting the value out of that. And then the second meeting, 
it's going to be a legit mastermind where you talk about, hey, did Preston stuff work for you? Did you take steps in that? And then where are you at in your nonprofit now? And how can we help you as the group, as a community grow and really drill down and focus and solve your problem? If you want more information on the nonprofit architect mastermind coming up, send an email to nonprofitarchitect at gmail.com and I will make sure you get the details and we're doing a limited launch. We're going to have 12 folks come in for a three month launch. And if you want to be part of that, if you want to be one of 12 space limited, send me an email now so I can put your name on the list and ensure you have the opportunity to give in that first group uh, to help build it with me to make sure it works for everybody. Can I, mean, I just I, say anyone who has just listened to what I said, Travis, and then what you just said after it, you know, you're, you're the one who's supposed to take one of those 12 spots. You couldn't have, I, that couldn't have been set up anymore. That volley was just ready and set up for it. I don't know how, to, how it happened, but that was perfect. We, there's, there's people out there, you know, like, oh, they pre-planned this. We didn't pre-plan this at all. I know. The mastermind, if you've been listening to these in order, you know there's been a couple week lead up to this. But uh, I think Trinace has given me the hands down, drag out way that I'm going to roll this thing out to provide the maximum value for you. Um, I've, I've talked to a few of you about my, my personal one-on-one -on -one coaching and you kind of balk and you know, a little squeamish about the price tag. And I don't blame you. It's, it's a big commitment. Uh, but if you're dedicating your life to a nonprofit, the commitment is probably worth it. But this is a way to get a little bit lower cost of entry and still get a lot of the same benefit and a lot of the same value uh, mm -hmm. from my close personal friends and contacts. So I'd love to have you on board with that. Trinace, this was fantastic. Yay! Absolutely. Yay. Can I say something, Trap? You just made me think about it really doesn't, the investment is, is going to pay off a million times over if you do something with the information, like you could literally listen to everything, you could pay for everything, but if you do nothing with the information that you're given, um, it really makes no difference at all. And so to take advantage of what's happening right now with the membership community with Nonprofit Architect in a group setting, I, you just can't beat it because you get um, not only Travis's energy, but the energy of the group, which we've been talking about all day today. <laughs> Um, the energy of the group and the learning of the group, but then you get to activate what you're learning and nothing happens without your activation. I learned at GI Joe growing up that knowledge is only half the battle, half the battle. Yeah. The other half <laughs> is violence. No, that's, that's army. Uh, the other half is action. You get action. the knowledge, yeah. you take the action <laughs> and you've got the safety net. You got the the experts in the group with you, you've got other nonprofits that have done what you're trying to do. If you're in Trinace's world, you have other ladies that have weathered the storm and have mm -hmm. the kind words and the empathy to help you know who you are as a person. Trinace, where can my fine listeners find you? Yeah, the easiest place I would love to hear from you all. Um, of course, go to our website to learn from what we're doing, uh, to connect with us. Um, if you're a woman and you are looking for a place of connection, we would love to have you. Go to realwomenrock.org. Again, realwomenrock.org. And um, in addition to all of the places you can go for the community and asking questions inside of Nonprofit uh, Architect, you're welcome to email us if you have questions at info at realwomenrock.org. Trinace, thank you so much for being on the show today. I am so happy to have this conversation with you. And I think this is a rock solid episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. been listening to The Nonprofit Architect. To listen to all our past shows, visit http colon forward slash forward slash nonprofitarchitect.org. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our show. Thank you.